Hi, seventh grade life science students. Welcome back to class. All right, this is Monday, May 4th. I have a message for you. May the 4th be with you. All right, finish watching this video, please, and take your notes. Make sure and attach a photo of them in your uh, Google Classroom and turn it in. And you can access that through RenWeb, remember? Um, and I'll see you later at the live Q&A Zoom session, all right? Let's get started. Ah, our new topic is biomes. Please put this in your notes. The word is biomes and underline that. And I'm gonna tell you what a biome is. All right, so you've learned recently about ecosystems and about life within an ecosystem. And um, you've learned about populations of organisms and about communities of organisms. Well, let me put that into perspective for you. Biome is actually larger than an ecosystem. It's a collection of ecosystems. Let me give you a model that you can put in your notes. All right, we're gonna call this the hierarchy of life. And this is just to help you know where in time and space we are when we're talking about biomes. Since I said they're actually bigger than ecosystems. All right, so we know atoms, everything. God made everything out of atoms. Atoms make molecules and compounds, which make organelles, which make cells. A cell really is the basic, most basic unit that we can call alive, right? Uh, a single-celled organism is alive. All right, above cells. Cells can organize into tissues, tissues into organs, and then organ systems, and we can have an entire individual organisms, a multicellular organism, right? Like a tree, or a duck, or us. Above organisms now, a whole species of organism is a population. That's one species. A bunch of species living together in the same area is a community, and all those in that community, in that area, is an ecosystem. Now, above the ecosystem, a collection of ecosystems is a biome. Wow, it's a collection of the same ecosystems, rather, is a biome. There is one more level. I'll introduce that. We're not going to talk about that. It actually just means all living things on Earth. Well, that's, um, uh, we're going to talk about the biome level, but above that is the biosphere. All right, let's get into biomes. Biomes and ecosystems. Here's your title. What is a biome? Well, a biome is a geographic area on Earth that contains ecosystems with similar biotic and abiotic features. Okay, let's unpack that. So it is a geographic area on Earth that contains ecosystems. You see the plural there, ecosystems that are similar. They're similar because they have similar biotic and abiotic features. So we're talking about different areas upon the Earth that can be classified as the same biome. Wow. And for those biomes, the ecosystems within them would have similar climates and similar organisms. So there are areas on the earth where we might see similar ecosystems. And then because they are similar ecosystems, they would have similar climates and we would see some similarities between the organisms. Wow, get those in your notes and I'll give you some more um, and I'll give you the, the details. All right, today we're gonna to talk actually about land biomes. Those are ter terrestrial biomes. That gives you a hint that later we're going to talk about the aquatic biomes. Today is terrestrial biomes, land biomes. All right, this is a, a picture from your books, figure 122, uh, just a depiction of the biomes across the world. And you'll see some different opinions, oh, five major land biomes, oh, um, six major land biomes. We're going we're gonna to look at seven major land biomes, so don't let that disturb you if you Google something different. All right, here's an example. Look at these ecosystems. This is my laser pointer. Here's desert. Here's some desert, right? We know here's some desert. Well, that is the desert biome. On those different land masses are similar ecosystems. And those similar ecosystems together are called the desert biome. All right, 
The seven are desert, grassland, tropical rainforest, temperate rainforest, temperature, temperate deciduous rainforest, taiga, and tundra. We're going to look at all those biomes today. So you can um, get those in your notes and let's go on. First, what we're going to talk about is the desert biome. Look at that. I see a picture of really hot land and a picture of really cold land. Did you know that deserts on Earth can be either hot or cold? The definition of a desert is merely a land that receives very, very little rainfall, something like 20, less than fewer than 20 centimeters a year of rain. Well, deserts can be hot or cold. Here, what you're looking at on the uh, right side is the um, is Antarctica, the land at the bottom of the world actually is considered desert biome um, because of the lack of rainfall. So we see some similarities in the climate, right? Lack of rainfall there on the right. Um, in the classic desert, the classic hot desert, lack of rainfall, uh, I'm sorry, on the left, and then lack of rainfall on the right. Um, similarities in the, in the climates, right? All right, well, let's look further at the desert. Okay, so these are Earth's driest ecosystems, um, and they appear on nearly every continent on Earth. One fifth, actually, of Earth's surface is covered with um, desert biome. Okay, something about the plants. Well, the plants in that hot desert biome, um, many of them, the, the, the similarities across the world that we'll see is that they tend to store water. A lot of them can store water or they just use less water. They're smaller um, or they have spiny leaves. They just use less water. Um, similarities in animals. Well, in that very hot weather, a lot of those animals are burrowing animals so they can get out of the heat of the day or they're very active at night. So they just avoid the hottest time of the day. Um, on the right there, we'll see some similarities there too in the animals. Uh, animals that live there actually can burrow. They're burrowing to this time to find warmth, to stay warmer, and to get out of those coldest times. All right, how about, uh, oh, other animals. Uh, in that hot climate, I left off animals that can actually store water, right? And we think of the classic camel. Camels in those hot desert biomes can store water. So they have very interesting adaptations. All right, that's the desert biome. Let me introduce you now to the grassland biome. Grassland biomes are named for their grasses. Um, grasses actually are the predominant plants in grasslands. So these are, gra these are ecosystems where grasses are the dominant plant. That's the main feature of the grassland biome. And you'll see them named also prairies, savannas, um, and meadows. And here we'll see whether that actually has wet and dry seasons across the world. These lands can be good for growing crops. Um, and so the animals there can be grazing animals, right? Um, how about um, giraffe, zebras, kangaroo, bison, buffalo, elk. Also along with that come predators that like grazing animals, lions, coyotes, hyenas. Um, little animals uh, that are similar across the world are animals that like to hide in the, in the grasses. These can be tall and short grasses. So that would be snakes, uh, prairie dogs, um, mice. All right, that's the grassland biome. Let's do the third biome, tropical rainforest biome. Now there are two types of forest um, on the earth that we'll talk about, and this is the tropical rainforest. These are tropical because these are near the equator and near the equator is very wet and moist and hot weather. Okay, so this is the tropical rain forest, different than forest in, the other part, in other parts of the world that we'll talk about. Well, this biome contains ecosystems of densely packed forests um, near the equator that are warm and wet year round. And what is characteristic of the tropical rainforest biome across around the world is that uh, these trees are so densely packed that um, they uh, very little sunlight filters to the floor of the forest. So most of the plant life down there, very, very little plant life down there rather, only about 1% of the sunlight gets down to the ground. So it's very dark within a tropical rainforest. 
Um, and there's not a lot of plant life down there. Um, these are teeming with life though. The, the, these types of forests are teeming with life and a lot of that life lives up near the canopy uh, top and mid range. Uh, some of these animals never come down to the ground. I mean, parrots, toucans, monkeys, um, other forests, tropical rainforest animals, jaguars, snakes, frogs, uh, just an abundance of life in the tropical rainforest. All right, I think that's good. Uh, let's go to the next type of forest. Okay, so this was tropical. The next biome is a temperate rainforest biome. This is also a forest, but it's called temperate rainforest because it is mild compared to very, very cold forest. Um, uh, we're going to talk in a minute about forest that actually is in very cold regions of the earth. So this would be considered temperate or mild rainforest biome. And these con this biome contains ecosystems of tall, again, but now they're coniferous forests with mild climates and seasons. All right, let's look at that word coniferous. Do you remember what that means? These trees are not flower bearing. Um, they actually deposit their seeds in cones, right? These are types of gymnosperms. All right, this temperate rainforest is mostly in coastal areas. And the seasons here are mild and rainy winters and cool and foggy summers. What? A cool and foggy summer? My goodness, that sounds like the greatest place on earth, doesn't it? We've, I've never heard of that before. Um, lots of, uh, sun can reach the ground here, so we can have lots, a, a lot more diversity of plant life at the ground level. Um, ferns, moss, vines, um, other shrubs. All right, and the animals that this type of biome can support is uh, uh, very rich also. Bears, uh, deer, elk, foxes, cougars, um, owls, raccoons, frogs again. Frogs are everywhere, really. All right, let's go to the next biome. Temperate deciduous forest biome. I left off the word biome there, but it goes there. Temperate deciduous forest. All right, this is another forest that's in temperate areas. Um, but these trees are deciduous. Now, these are the broad-leafed trees that will actually drop their leaves in winter, right? They'll enter, enter a dormant stage. Um, so this, this biome contains ecosystems of deciduous forests with cold winters and hot summers. Um, these plants, uh, oh, it supports a diverse plant uh, variety also. Lots of types of plants, lots of types of trees, actually maples, um, oaks, birch, trees that gain beautiful fall colors so that have full seasons, right? The animals here, chipmunks, raccoons, opossums, foxes, and actually this type of forest is the most common in the U.S., uh, most, type, most common type of forest in the U.S. here. All right, the sixth biome is taiga. I forgot the word biome again, taiga biome. These are those very, very, very cold forests that I was talking about in the very, very cold regions of the earth. Um, let's see, I'm looking at my notes, taiga. Taiga is actually located near the top of the world. Um, and it stretches across Eurasia and across uh, North America, very, very cold areas. This is the largest land biome in the world, these types of forests. All right, these are called needle leaf forests because these are also coniferous. And, um, you know, conifers are, for the most part, they have uh, narrow, narrow leaves that can be described as needles. And I think the benefit here is that in these very, very cold areas that we'll get Arctic blasts and we'll get um, lots of snow in these areas, well, that type of a needle helps to drop snow. Snow, uh, it can shed snow uh, much easier. So that adds protection against that cold for these organisms. Uh, the animals that can live here are very well adapted. They are either hibernating animals or they migrate. So across the world, we see that similarity in these types of ecosystems, in this taiga biome. Um, these are mice or bear, they can hibernate um, or moose or um, 
elk, they can uh, migrate. So they're either, um, oh, most of them are either um, hibernating or migrating. All right, let's go on to the seventh biome. Number seven is the tundra biome, the very coldest lands. Wow. Tundra biomes actually uh, contain ecosystems that are cold, dry, and treeless. And these are just south of the North Pole. Further north of the taiga, but um, just south of the North Pole. These ecosystems, uh, they can't support trees really. They're known for the permafrost. Now permafrost is just a layer of land that is frozen. It is always frozen. So really nothing can penetrate deep into that soil. Um, all we see here is a selection of moss and lichens and grass. No trees. Uh, this really cannot support tree life. So the animals that live here, the few animals that live here also are either hibernating or migrating. Mm, lemmings live here all year, but not much else. All right, you did it. That is the end of your lesson for Monday, May 4th. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you at the Q&A later. Bye-bye.